Welcome to the Ages of Rock podcast with your hosts, Bill Algy, Dennis Talbot, and Alan Tate. We are three guys who have one thing in common, a love of rock and roll. Our goal is to talk about all things rock. We hope you find this show intriguing, funny, and occasionally highly opinionated. Enjoy. Hey guys, welcome to the Ages of Rock podcast, episode number 23. Uh, today we're going to spend a little time talking about those bands that never quite got to the top. They did a lot of great stuff, but just never quite made it to the top. So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about them, but we got some other rock stuff to cover this week. So we're going to start out with um, a little tidbit from Alan. So what what do you got, buddy? Uh, the single for Fire and Water. I don't know if – I think I found it on YouTube. Yeah, we're going to go with YouTube. <laughs> no, I found it on YouTube. Uh, they released a video for – or uh, not a video, just the audio of – Fire and Water, Rock and Roll Hell, and I believe there was a third one, but I didn't listen to that from the Ace Frehley Orange, Oranges, <laughs> <laughs> Origins Volume One. I think they're great. cover album <laughs> that's coming out tomorrow. Go buy it, people. I like oranges. Uh, anyway, um, you know Paul Paul Stanley and Ace Frehley worked together on the cover <clears throat> of Freeze Fire and Water, and for. Like the last two weeks, they've been dropping hints. You know, Ace posted a picture of Ace and Paul's guitar strap, and then he posted a picture of Ace and Paul's guitars from the backside, so you really couldn't say for sure, but you knew it was their guitars. <clears throat> and the scuttlebutt all over Facebook, at least in my feed, was, oh, they're going to replace Tommy. Ace is coming back. And I'm like, no, they just scheduled a tour. Ace is not coming back, at least on this tour. And, um, uh, my friend John Arago said that odds are they are shooting a video together, and today it was confirmed John was correct. So I just wanted to bring that bit up. And I listened to the Fire and Water song, and Paul sang that in a lower register, mm -hmm. and I think it sounds really good. Yeah, I do too. I thought it was really good. Actually, um, I thought the, the guitars were a little bit – the mix on the guitars was a little bit much. But I thought it was really good. I, I liked it. I like the pulsing in that register. It sounds it sounds much better for him. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I pulled one of these at work, you know, listening to it with my phone against my ear and listening <laughs> to the first. But no, he did he did sound like we're you know, if, as long as he sings in in key and where he can get it where he can sing, it sounds great. Yeah, he sounds he's still I mean, it sounds pretty strong. He's got so his I thought chops, it was pretty good. Now, I, right. I also yeah. listened to Ace's cover of Rock and Roll Hell and I'm going to have to listen to that one a few more times because my first inclination was you were in hell. I did, I, not that I was in hell, but my <laughs> eardrums were, yeah. and it's not that it's bad. It's just, I don't like the way he sang it, you know, and I, I don't know how to describe that other than he aceified it. He ate that's That's exactly <laughs> dude. I'm going to come over there and punch you. That was my word. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> no, but really? yeah, really, he did. He aceified it. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, a little sloppy but, uh, and kind of. Well, I also this, heard. Uh, to, I know. also heard last week, I believe it was, they did, uh, they released uh, audio on YouTube for Emerald, which is a Thin Lizzy cover. Now, I've never heard the Thin Lizzy recording of the song that I'm aware of. So I don't really have any basis for comparison, but overall, I didn't. I just didn't care for the song itself. It sounds just like the Thin Lizzy song. I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty damn close. So uh, there was other Thin Lizzy songs that he could have did besides that one. I wasn't real, you know, not real keen on it. That's all I have for news okay. anyway. Dennis, you got anything? Oh, I bought the new Cheap Trick uh, disc. Uh, was it Bing, Zowie, Boom, or whatever? <laughs> you know, I'm really into it. Um, gave it a little bit of a listen. Haven't really sit down and gave it the skip test yet. Just kind of a um, couple of the, the first song sounds good. Second song's okay. I just haven't had time to really sit down and listen to it. So probably next week I'll give you a, a full review. But uh... You know, I... does that go back to the things we've talked about before, even like with Kisses? You know, I, I really don't need any new music. That's, I you know, is it, it, why, you know? See, because you know what's going to suck is when we go to that concert in July. Yeah, they'll do a couple songs we're gonna from hear, that. We're going to hear that those dreaded words. Well, we're going to play something from our new album. I don't want to hear the new album. That's when I go pee. 
Yeah, play Budokan. <laughs> no, play the whole Budokan. I don't give a shit. You know, get play stuff that I know. Yeah. You know, so yeah, that'll I'm be, not. That'll be time for a B W E W R U N. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going with you. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. All right, so I had a couple things. Um, one, I posted on the Facebook page a while ago. Um, uh, Joe Bonamassa's new um, a video that just came out from a new album that just was released last or a couple weeks ago, called um, "Mountain Climbing." The album is called "Blues of Desperation." Um, a great rock song. I mean, really, uh, the groove, the bass groove is really good in it. I really liked it. I found it by accident. A buddy of mine had posted on his Facebook page. I listened to it. I was like, man, that 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 kicks kicks some butt so i uh put it up on the page for the video for us to watch and i i went to my um i went to my amazon prime account and downloaded the album to listen to <laughs> so i'll be doing that um here later hopefully but a couple other things um one i want to talk a little bit about some um just you know so the political world's heating up. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on with who's going to, you know, with president presidential elections, and now we got all this stuff going on with a couple of different states passing some laws that, um, you know, about who can use the right bathroom, um, and how that's based on whether or not it's your sexual orientation um, at birth or biologically or whatever happens after that. But um, I guess Bruce Springsteen decided that he was not going to. He boycotted or canceled a show this past week. And I in um, North Carolina, and Brian Adams is doing the same thing in Mississippi for passing a similar law. Oh. Um, the problem I have with that is I'm a Brian Adams fan, which that's a diff that's a little bit of a problem. But you know, really, um, I don't give a shit what you guys think. I don't give a sh you know it, it, if if me buying a ticket is going to require me to have the same views you do about something, then you don't have to worry about it. I'm not buying a ticket, and I'm not buying any of your music. That's not what your jobs are. Your jobs are to entertain me and other people and put your music out. It's not about deciding who politically you should think I should vote for or I should be, you know, approving of or whatever. That's not your decision. That's mine. And you don't need to make it. You don't have to you don't have to appear places. That's fine. You can make that choice just like but but don't expect to sell tickets and that kind of stuff. And you know what? You did you know, just refund the people's money and you know, keep your political opinions to yourself and shut up and move on because you're no better than I am. You put your pants on one leg at a time and we don't need to hear your crap. So um, that's just my little rant about that. <laughs> I just, and, I just, and that's I all I've got to say about that. I get very offended by that. Bono, I mean, I, I don't give a crap about all that stuff that, you know, he did. It. I, I was a U2 fan until he started that crap. And it's that for me ended it. I don't, I don't, I don't need a political, my band or bands that I care like to decide become political um you know gene simmons got into it with ice ice whatever his name is uh peach ice ice peachy i don't know what the hell his name is yeah. ict <laughs> ice you know ice ct cube. i don't know whatever um ice tray whatever anyway um with, about the whole thing about him saying you know he will can't wait for rap to die or whatever he said and you know what that's gene's opinion and which is fine um they don't belong in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They're not a rock band. And I watched an interview with Howard Stern with Ice Ice Jello, whatever, and <laughs> said, you know, he he disagreed that you know it was rock and roll because it was out there and it was a trend setting and that's what rock and roll is all about. Well, okay, play a play a guitar on there and some drums, dude, and get get out from behind a computer yeah. and that's called rock and roll. What you're doing is not rock and roll. So. Go get a rap hall of fame, join it. Actually, he even admitted on the show that he didn't think there was one. So that's because you need there to isn't. Yeah. Phone you up some money, <laughs> get some of your buddies and, and start one. But otherwise you don't belong in there. So yeah. hey. editorials by Bill. Okay, one more. <laughs> Maybe two more. Uh Steve Miller was inducted this past weekend um in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And um uh, not, I'm not a big Steve Miller fan. We talked about this on the show before, but I apparently have become a big, bigger Steve Miller fan, not of his music, but of his views, because he really pretty much just um, he filleted the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame establishment. <laughs> he took a knife and carved that baby up into about 30 different pieces and just let it out there. So um, you'll see a lot of stuff. You go to the to the uh, Ages of Rock podcast. <clears throat> 
uh, Facebook page. There's you'll see there's quite a few things posted. Um, he's very unhappy about the way he was treated, um, the way his band was treated, price of tickets to get other people on there. Um, and then you have some you know young pups called the Black Keys that come out there and they feel like they were disrespected by Steve Miller and stuff like that. Well, you know, great, leave. No, wait, you did. Nobody noticed. <laughs> so you had to go tell somebody because nobody gave a shit and, 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 you know, that you left. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's just really – it's kind of heating up. I don't know what the deal is. But, you know, I think the way to get the attention of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is to just – people quit going. I mean the, the the stars, you know, the artists just say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to I'm not going to attend. It doesn't mean anything. It has no bearing. It's given by a group of people that – no, every year make it up. So it's every year it's the same conversation, same shit. Every just, year, just stop having. Just, just people just need to stop going. Yeah. I mean, Cheap Tricks thing was pretty cool. I mean, I liked. I, I, it was great seeing Bunny Carlos play with them again. And um, but you know, whatever. that lasted what one night, and then the next day there <laughs> three songs. <laughs> the next day it. puts out an email, puts out a letter to the group that says, "There, there. I just proved to you that it isn't about me." Quit saying bad things about me. Shut up and get on with it. So, the shareholders is what he called them. Yeah, yeah very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it's a business, man. You want to talk about the rock? You want to talk about the music business? Well, I tell you what, Bunny though, trick, <clears throat> he's got a damn good lawyer because he's still getting a cut. <laughs> he doesn't do anything, and he's still a, he's still a full member. What's up well, with I don't, that? I think I think it's because he never left. Right. The only way he was going to leave is they were going to have to, they were going to have to do you know incorporate him and or whatever and keep you know he's going to have to keep getting some money so they can tour all they want he don't care right send me the check baby keep yep. sending me the check but he's got an album coming out in June I think um, yeah I seen, so I seen some of the I seen the thing about it it didn't look very yeah I don't know you know no. I have to wait and see yeah who knows all right that's enough ranting for one evening and um, enough political crap for one evening what else we covered. Mm, let's see that. Ace Freely mm -hmm. yeah. yeah all right so all right so tonight um the real episode is about um those bands that never really made it to the top I mean they floundered around did pretty well but never really got out of the gate so always the bridesmaid never the bride I was gonna say they stole my thing well, well I said that many many <laughs> times ago and <laughs> Then it's so still so there. Now you've got to steal something I from Dennis. You just made that up, though, right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll so I'll start it off. One of my actually, I I really only have I have two that I that I came up with, and both are two of my favorite bands. Um, the first one is Dokken. Um, for me, that's I, I know that's somebody I know that. Um, for me, that's somebody that I've always been a huge huge fan of. Saw them. I can't tell you how many times, and um, always an opener. Always an opener, man. Always <laughs> an opener. I, no, 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 that's not true. Actually, I saw them at the Vogue in Indianapolis, and they weren't an yeah. opener. And um, the they Vogue. played a great. It was a great show. Um, but how uh, big it was, was the Vogue? A, um, I don't know, fifteen hundred people. Yeah, maybe wow. you know. Um, but it was cool. I mean, it was um. That was a very interesting show because we thought it was going to be George Lynch. It was right when they had come back together back in, I don't know, 2020, 20, 20, I don't know, 2000 something. I don't know. They kind of got back together and um, we get there and um, there's no George Lynch. You could see the band and there's no George Lynch. And I was like, well, that's kind of weird. I wonder if they're, if we're back to the thing where George is staying on the bus and, you know, or, whatever and nope it was red beach from europe and he tore it up so it was really it was a great show but you know dawkins one of those bands that had they sold you know um over 10 million records um which is phenomenal um had a career about 10 you know a pretty popular career for probably eight you know six to ten years um but just Again, never, you know, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. And, you like know, they had a really big MTV. I mean, they had a lot of videos, oh, and they played them presence. all the time. Yeah. And it was one of yeah. those things where they just, I don't, it was just the people didn't grab onto it. I don't know why they didn't. I, we did. I mean, I, like I said, I was a huge fan. But they just didn't, I, I don't know why they didn't. I, I, you know, it would be interesting to sit and kind of, I don't know, 
it'd be interesting to find out why you know, or know the reason why but I guess it just they just I don't know people just didn't like them it'd be interesting to like to interview Don or somebody and say you know how what why was it always the opening how what right. what was never what happened that never caused the trigger to get I mean were they offered a headlining bill but it was never came to fruition was it well, it, it wasn't that like they, they. It's not that they didn't have a record contract. Yeah, you, know, you have yeah, a record, and contract. they weren't selling records. I mean, they, and, they even got nominated for a Grammy in nineteen eighty nine. Right. So, you know, you did a movie I, soundtrack. You know, you do. Yeah. You had a song put on a movie. A huge you had, song. You had MTV playing your videos. Like you said, they had the perfect storm. Why didn't it take off? I don't. I. I just. That's really. I'm like you. That's that was one. Of, that was my top one on the list of far as why. I don't know why. Yeah, I, do, I, don't, I don't get it. Alan, Alan, did you listen to them? Are you a fan of Doc and Armin? Are you into them? Fairweather. Fairweather? Yeah. So what's your Fairweather? I mean, why, why Fairweather? What is what is it that you did? I never really even heard of Doc and much until he would have I, been was, a little younger. I was growing up and moved out before I ever really heard okay. of them. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. So In their heyday was when we were, you yeah. know. That's what I'm when saying. All he was probably old people a were metalheads. <laughs> <laughs> it's our generation that messed it up, or our group that messed yeah, it I just, up. I just yeah. don't understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just don't. I don't get it because I mean, and, and they, they had, had and the thing shows. is, they had hits. They yeah. had hits. They yeah. had radio. I mean, they got radio play. I mean, they got everything. And it's just, I don't know. I don't get it. I, yeah, mean, I, I never have understood that one. I don't. I don't understand that one. So that was one for me. So what do you guys? What else you guys got? Alan, go for it. What about Skid Row? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I, 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 I don't think they ever really headlined anything major. When they broke so. big, I was in I was stationed in Germany, so I was oblivious to how things were going in America. So I assume that because they opened for Motley Crue when they came to Germany, that they were probably an opening act in America as well. And see, Doc McGee took them under him. I mean, Doc McGee was there, wasn't he their manager? I think he had both of them at that time. I think he because had I know Sebastian and Doc McGee. Sebastian's got a lot of bad blood with, with Doc McGee, I think. Because Sebastian was young. Well, Sebastian I mean, has started, bad blood with everyone. <laughs> Sebastian was what, 16, 17 years old when he started out with Skid Row? He was really, really young. And he did a lot of stupid <laughs> things back then. And like you said last week, he's got his demons. But yeah. I mean, I love Sebastian. I mean, the, the dude, he is a. He's I think a, he's extremely talented. He he's just, a great front man. And can he's still a good sing. singer. Still he's sing. Pipes, Did you time. guys see that video of him and Axl Rose trading yeah, videos? Yeah, great. Off, I thought it sounded Vocals off on My Michelle. That was pretty. Yeah, I think neat. I even said. That, yeah, I said that if if Axl can't do it, I, uh, actually, that's one of okay. That's probably one of those things that if Axl can't front Guns and Roses. Sebastian probably could, and you if you didn't see it, you probably wouldn't know it. They sound a lot alike. Right. Their, their, their voices are not that different. And they're pretty they're good again. friends, too. Right. Yeah, I, I, it's kind of weird because when I watched the video, I kind of thought at first it didn't seem like that was a real friendly kind of thing at first. And then, then I was kind of like, okay, it's this, I got it. But, yeah, I – yeah. I, I'm going to throw, the- throw out a theory, though, right now real quick. Skid Row and Dokken, you know, Skid Row, they were they had the, the MTV, they had the they had the songs, they had a record label, they had that same deal. But their singer had issues, and then the band and the singer, you know, what I'm saying they had issues. I was kind of thinking the same thing. Don Dokken, Dokken, you know, could it be turmoil, inner turmoil from the band that kept them from being that? You know what I'm saying? They kept it be that they didn't get the push. They, kept, they didn't get the they, push. They kept themselves from being, you know, the stuff that we seen. You know, they were getting this play and this play, but maybe at the at the same time, their management knew that they were just, you know, they were probably beating each other up twenty four seven. Well, Doc McGee know. was like, "I've already got Motley Crue to deal with. I'm not dealing with you, jackasses." Right. Yeah, I mean, I, that's I saw that too. I've, <laughs> I've seen. I've, that's I've seen, just the theory. Right. Well, yeah, and it could, it definitely could be that the record labels could not take the risk of putting a show together a headlining tour out there that was going to implode right you know especially with i mean how competitive was it then i mean think about how competitive it was i mean you know growing up in evansville there was a show i mean i think i remember one summer going to like 12 shows right there was somebody there all the time 
Uh, and, yeah. and, and, you know, I, I think it probably had to, a lot to do with the competitive, you know, the competitiveness of the market and, and they couldn't take the risk. Yeah. I think that's a great, that's a great analogy. I mean, I think that's definitely on the right track, but right. I don't yeah, know. I mean, I was just, I mean, we were just saying, it just, it just hit me. I was like, going, oh, well, you got, you got, tur- you got inner turmoils in the band, you know, and, and, you know, Doc and have put their things aside a couple times and did a few things. Skid Row has never got Sebastian back. And I, I don't know who it is in that band that doesn't want him back. Rachel Bolin. That's, That's what I was exactly. thinking. That's I think what I thought it that was. That is. <laughs> <laughs> And I and and um and Sebastian's reached out to them and said, right. "Hey, you know, I want to bury the hatchet, not in your skull, right. but I want to bury, the, <laughs> I, want to, I want to bury the hatchet." And being how good of a singer he is, I mean, good lord, what well, did he do so to make you that mad? I mean, did he re- screw his girlfriend or something? I don't know. Well, you, know? you never know. Um, you, know. you know, a reunion tour with Guns and Roses and Skid Row opening. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, yeah, awesome. the Guns and Roses thing is going to be enough, right? Because they're selling a bazillion tickets, sort of. Uh, I think the football stadium thing might have been a little bit. They, no, Brazilian. They're they not off selling Brazilian because I got them easy last. <laughs> I told you about that last week. I got them pretty easy. Well, I was looking around. Know. I was looking around for Cincinnati too, and a lot of tickets. tickets everywhere. <laughs> so yeah. I think they may have thought, got their. Uh, I don't know. What is their uh, their stomachs? Their well, they got their cart before their horse. Head, yeah, their heads well, big, their stomach thing. I have a theory about that. Nobody wants to buy tickets until they actually get to town and make sure they're actually going to play tonight. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> All the tickets will be sold out by ten thirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, that's like I said. I bought insurance on this one. I've never bought insurance on a ticket ever until this one, and I'm like, oh, you know what? Seven bucks might not be a bad idea. <laughs> that's you know, and that's kind of funny. <laughs> that's kind of funny. So, you know, people that listen to this, you know, or watch this and think about that insurance thing. I never thought about insurance for that reason. I always think about it for weather or for if I can't make. No, well, but that's was another one. But being that it's outdoor and it's a, but yeah, no, this one here, I needed insurance. <laughs> uh, I would imagine they were probably a pretty big insurance policy on that rider. <laughs> for them to show up and pay some money because I believe uh, you are probably correct. You know, I would as a promoter for that show, I would say you got to have insurance and you're going to guarantee me X dollars because I'm not putting you up in a stadium for your monkey ass not to show up well, or okay. for you not to feel the vibe or whatever the hell you got going. See, that's I mean, I know we're getting off topic, but I wonder why the St. Louis thing was not done. Do you think it's because the last time they were there, they they trashed the place? <laughs> that riot. <laughs> You know, I yeah, I would think so. I think that's pretty well. They're that may be that might be the city ordinance actually. Yeah. Well, 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 let's go ahead and steer the ship back on the course, and it's right. returned to yeah. us. So, all right. Yeah. So anyway, my I was thinking. Well, of course, you know, Dockin was my number one. Another band that I think that was really I got a bigger one, but I'm gonna wait for a minute on that one. Another band I think that had never made it big <laughs> was uh, Saxon. You guys, big Saxon fans? Oh, it's on my list. Okay. okay. Well, they were they're an opening band for everybody. Yeah, they've been around for good lord. They've been around forever. They put out great music. Biff still sounds great. The dude. I mean, they just released an album here. It's been a, it's been a few years back, but they re-recorded a lot of their stuff with a. I think some of the band you know over time that they've just quit and whatever, but they got some new younger guys in. And re-recorded it. And Biff still sounds great, and the, you know the songs are. It just sounds good. That's 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 one that I thought of was Saxon. You know they just never made it. They were never a headliner band. They were always, you know, a triple bill or a, or an opener. They did a lot of stuff with Iron Maiden. You know, you know if you needed an opener for Priest or Iron Maiden or what have you, you know Saxon was usually your 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 go-to band. Were they time. a British band? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That, 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 I mean, I, I've heard of them. I probably know a song or two, but not a oh, band that I ever, do a lot of ever really followed. Um, Princess of the Night. Um, it's just, a, just sit down sometime and just listen to the Saxon. It's really good. You'll, you'll enjoy it. And the guy has got a great voice. It's, cool. it's a very guitar-driven band. All right. Bill. Bill. Back to me. Okay. Yeah. Other one for me is Great White. 
um, a band that I thought had phenomenal talent in that band. Um, I love Jack Russell's voice. I've always loved Jack Russell's voice, and I've always liked um, uh, yeah, uh, Mark. Um, gosh, I had it. In my, <laughs> damn it, um, Mark. You got Dennis did. <laughs> and I can't think of his last name, so we're gonna go with Mark. Mark. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know, guitar playing, but uh, it, that band, I. I've seen them open for a whole bunch of people. I have seen them headline a couple of times in some small venues, but great shows. Um, I still listen to their music. I still have a lot of their stuff downloaded on my on my on my iPod, and it's not stuff that's new stuff. I've you know stuff from 1998 and stuff from 2004, and I've got a couple of different things that I mean I still like their music. Now I don't. I I listen to the great white that is. Um, Mark Kendall, it's great. You're there again, we've got another band dude, that <laughs> I is came up with the name, Dennis. <laughs> there you go. Good job, uh, Mark Kendall. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's not the same. I mean, it, right. that band with with needs, um, you know, needs Jack Russell's voice to that. That's just that sound for me. Um, uh, but yeah, now, and he, I'd like Mark to see them. The, actually, Mark they're doing the some tours. They're doing some shows with Dokken together. Actually. I was looking at it online earlier. That'd be cool to see that. Which one, Marks or Jack Russell? Jack Russell's Great White and Dokken. Okay. Because does so Mark owns the name. Does he own the name Great White as it stands by itself? Then and then, and I then Jack think uses so. Okay. Yes. But there again, here's another band who the lead singer has got issues with the band. You know, maybe there was a lot of turmoil back in those I don't, days. You know, I don't, I don't know. I, don't, I didn't. You know. I never heard about that stuff back then, though. You took they, the guy. They, you they took were the to guy pie. For, I mean, what what did he say? <laughs> I took the guy pie. That's right. I should ask him. But yeah. they were. He was there. He was then. I talked to Mark Kendall then. Yeah. He was there. I mean, he was. I mean, he was really cool. They were. The only guy that was missing was like the you know, the drummer wasn't the same guy and the keyboard player. But so you know, they, I think they called them Gunner Roses. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But that's a band that I really, I really do like. I still like. I listen but to. But there them. again, like you said, they had a record label. They had MTV that's playing the shit hits. out of them. They had yep. huge hits. Yep. Why didn't you, you know, why didn't you get to the, get to the show? You know, I, I don't. There again. I guess everybody know. can't be, a, be a headliner. You know, somebody's got to be an opening. Y and T. It's another band. Open. Yeah. For, but they had one song really. I mean, Y and T. Yeah. I mean, but they good, still good band. Yeah. But open for everybody under the sun. Mm-hmm. Right. Fast way. That's another one. Real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fast way. Yeah. Anyway. All right, Alan. Go, man. Fog hat. Yeah. Were they ever? They were pretty big, though. Yeah. They were... But they were seventies had... big. Then, and by the time eighties yeah. come around, they were kind of burned out, burning out, kind of. And they were kind of getting them on the on the on the slide on the backside of that on the eighties. Just Fog hat. Them. The early seventies was <laughs> huge, man. For a slow ride. Oh my it was god. Was like they... three. <laughs> How many movies? How many movies? You know, seventies movies. Have you seen the word? I mean, they probably made enough money off that one song. Oh, I just bet the so. Licensing, licensing of that cool song. The city. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, then I will retract Fog Hat and I will say Motorhead. No, I think no. I but Fog Hat. I think you're right. No. I mean, they're they're a band that did pretty well, but I don't know if they did nationally really well, or if because I, I don't remember hearing Re- about I them. I think they were pretty big here in this region. Yeah, that's what I meant. I think yeah, in, in this band, area yeah. they were pretty big, but I don't know nationally. They're a Midwest band. I don't think out west. I, I don't uh, in California. They probably never even heard of Fog. We know about Fog, but Fog. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but again, small. like you said, they, I mean, they, they were in a lot of soundtracks and stuff, so they had to be heard yeah. on the West Coast somehow because that's where it was all made. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Well, I, cool. I, I give my friend Chuck at Kick Axe Magazine a shout out for that one, and I've got a couple more him. I asked his opinion on some of these since I didn't have time to do research, and we're going to get him on the show one of these weeks. But uh, All right. cool. yeah, so, sounds good. So, so if these are incorrect, we're blaming Chuck. <laughs> no, they're not incorrect. No, it's they're not a matter of. I was just thinking that maybe Fog Hat was more of a. Well, when I say incorrect, I mean you know were they a headline act in an arena or were they a headline act in a theater? Yeah, I think the timing know. timing was in me. I don't well, know if Fog Hat. I'm sure Fog Hat had stadium. So, gigs. somebody I who's watching this show who is a big Foghat fan, let us oh, know. We're, we're going to look that up. <laughs> we're going to research right now. Well, Bill can look that up while Dennis is taking his next. Oh, I said Motorhead, but. <laughs> yeah, but Motorhead was, yeah. yeah. 
but they like you said it, it was it was kind of the same deal okay i'm well, gonna go i, I gonna... think i think probably one of the reasons that motorhead wasn't really really big was just because the music was kind of right heavier music and it was really really loud right you know so that may have had an effect on why they never headlined arena tours right all right i'm gonna jump to my big one real quick uh what and you're gonna think that I'm silly, <laughs> but I I got my th- I got my reasoning on this. And the biggest one I can think of is Cheap Trick. That was on my list too. Because I saw know, them headline. Were, very few times they've they have opened more than they have headlined. Oh uh, yeah. Well, they and headlined. they've never. And even though they had you know, they had Budokan and they had this and they had it, they have not got the step if they were a great big band they would have been in the hall of fame years ago you know what i'm saying yeah i know they headlined uh a tour in 88 because it was house of lords joan jett and cheap trick and i bet all three of us saw it at robert stadium and that was and that's when the flame was out yeah yep what what year was that that was december of 88 when they came to evansville because i seen that too and that's but that's the only reason that they did it was because of that flame you know, the f- I saw them headline in 1980 because I was in the eighth grade and I took a girl that I was in the eighth grade with. And my dad took us. And that was in 1980. Right. And they were they were the headliner. But they have um, more. They've been more of a opening band. Yeah. Yeah. I don't disagree. They By could the have way, been Fellas bigger. Fog Hats on tour now. Great. They have got a buttload of dates. I mean, a lot. Joe's Bar and Grill. No, well, you know, <laughs> it's a casino here and there, and some fairs, and yeah. but there's a lot, a lot of dates. Yeah, there's a lot of those bands that do that. Though. Like Head East, they used to. Hell, they used to play in Evansville a lot. They played over. I Blue think Head East was at Evansville, weren't they? Yeah, they. They, they, they were they out of uh, Illinois. Yeah, yeah Illinois. close down there. But no, like I said the Cheap Trick one. That's, that's where I was. Uh, it's just one of those things that, you know, I, I know that they, and you know, the thing was, I was listening that you were talking about, they were on that radio thing on Sunday, Alan. Um, the what? One of those stations where they were running the. Uh, oh, they were on Sirius the, XM, Classic right. Rewind. Well, yeah, but it wasn't even on that. It was on just one of the regular stations they had going on on Sunday when I was going to band practice. And they were talking about the fact of that. And I think there again, cheap trick. It was time. It was a timing issue, is because they got back and they from boot when they did Budokan and, and they they recorded that album, and they came back and jumped in the studio and did Dream Police. Well, they had Dream Police done in the can and they were like ready to release it, and then Budokan took off. So the studio set on Dream Police for like a year. <laughs> or so, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 so by the time Dream Police came out, it was old news to them. You know, they, they wasn't fresh and everything. You know, I, I think it was a time. I think it's a timing issue on a lot of those bands too. You know, you can't help that. You know, Budokan got big. You know, it was just one of those things that it took off because they said that that album was never ever supposed to be released in the U.S. It was only supposed to be. Robin said it was only supposed to be released in Japan. And one of the, I guess, the record company said, well, let's just try it here. And it just went boom. <laughs> you know, it took off. But, Interesting, uh, though. So that's another band that's career floundered around until a live album came out. Exactly. And then exploded. To, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Not Absolutely. to the level of Kiss, obviously. Not but, to the level. But, but, but yeah. that's, the, that's, the, that's what catapulted them. But it didn't stay up there. It kind of... The Flame got them back up her again. I think that that album. What, what was it? What album was that off of? The Flame. Lack of luxury. I think. Was it? <clears throat> I might actually have something right. I need to check that too. <laughs> <laughs> if I get something right, it's going to be a freaking miracle. <laughs> oh, awesome! Well, but anyway, you're going to have to. Was the one that I was thinking about. So yeah. anyway, you're going to have to Bill. stop researching for a minute, Bill, because it's your turn. It's your turn. Well, really, that's. I mean, those are those. I I really came up with two bands. Those are the two bands that I really came up with that I thought were, you know, for deserving, me, deserving, deserving bands that I big. thought, right. I can't figure out how they didn't make it. Um, yeah, there really wasn't, I mean, 
that's really the those are really the only bands I really kind of felt I at least back in in the day, right? That I couldn't figure out why they didn't make it bigger. Well, me and my friend were talking about that yesterday or a couple of days ago, and he started naming off a bunch of bands. But I, it got to the point where I was like, going, yeah, those are bands that never made it big, but half of them didn't deserve to be big. That's why I had to kind of keep it to who did I think deserve to, to continue, you know, that did enough. Like you said, had the videos, had the rec- contracts, had this and this. And for some reason, didn't take off. Yeah, it's just. You know, it, it's interesting to figure out. So, if, if you think about in that time when all that hair metal stuff was out, so right. you know, you think about bands like Slaughter and right. you know, Rat made it, right. um, had a headlining tour. You know, Slaughter never had a headlining tour. I, what? I, it's interesting to see what was it about Slaughter was late in the game. Yeah, Slaughter was late. In the game. So, what that, was it that really got those band, bands catapulted? You know, Motley Crue. Um, I, 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 what was it about them that really got them Cinderella Cinderella was a band that that's a band for me that although I like them I don't, I don't understand how they, how they got the status they got I mean no. I, I don't know that they were better to me personally I don't think they were any better do than you, Dokken or any better than Great White oh, I think they were you think just, that the Cinderella had something to do with the Bon Jovi connection it could have probably I, yeah probably yeah, had that look but it just it wasn't but it wasn't it didn't sound like Bon Jovi music. No, it didn't. It, but it, it sounded just, more ACDC than it did. Yeah, and it, it just but it wasn't. But, and it's not that I didn't. I don't like them. I do like Cinderella. I I do. I just didn't. I didn't get how they got to be headlining a headlining act. And I'm like, I, they're they're good, but I don't know that they were right. headliners. I, I just didn't. I didn't get that piece. Yeah. Which is you know we're not really talking. I guess we could. I mean we could spend a few minutes talking about how did what are those bands that ended up headlining during that time that we kind of go, what the hell? I mean, how did right. that happen? Um, oh, Rat's one of them. Rat, you know, well, you know I never, you know, I, I didn't get to see it, but it was, a bunch of my friends went and seen him. And, of course, you know, Twisted Sister opened up. Well, of course, they destroyed, you know, they destroyed the place, had it ready to, you know, rip it apart. And then Rat comes out. Rat's, I, and, I've, and I've, I can't attest to this because I've never seen him live, but everybody I've ever talked to says they sound great on an album. But they sound like shit in concert. Well, no, I, I saw Rat back at Rocklahoma a couple of years ago, and well, but they did know, have did I, they have the original band. It was well, everybody except for Robin Crosby, but right. um, Carlos mm-hmm. Cavosa was right. playing in his <laughs> place. But you know, I That's was a step I, up I saw <laughs> the YouTube videos. I was right. expecting Piercy to sound terrible, but I was. Honest to God, I was shocked because Rat right. was up there. They sounded great. They tore it up. The one funny thing was, though, you could tell that uh, that you know, like a lot of the lead singers, right? Piercy has his his little skits that he does, right? And he he did the skit for like Wanted Man or something, and then they played something else because they decided <laughs> at the last minute to drop that song from that set. Right. So, uh, but yeah, I was really surprised at how well they sounded. I have seen Stephen Piercy play. Uh, it was down here at Fast Eddie's with a different band. It wasn't with Rat, but they, of course they did a bunch of Rat songs. And he, he, he and like you said, it was, I was surprised. His voice was better than I thought. But I never heard. And maybe it was just for the fact that when Rat was in their prime, they were probably all screwed up and you know partying way too much yeah, and sounding right. like shit. You know, and now all days. They're, they've straightened their shit up and they sound better. Yeah. A lot of bands sound better now than they used to because yeah. of that fact. You know? They replaced Quaaludes <laughs> with cholesterol medicine. Exactly. <laughs> Lipitor. Yeah. 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 So do you have any more, Dennis? I don't have any more. Dennis, what no, else? I, other than, like I said, I was talking about what, other than what I was thinking about was like Fastway. But there again, I don't think Fastway was, I mean, they headlined a shit gob of, i seen them like four times in one year. Yeah, but I don't think that they deserved. To, I mean, they had what one really good album, one kind of okay album, then a they had a soundtrack. But you know, there again, I was trying to think of more bands that could have been had the backing, had the stuff, but didn't make it. And that's about what I got. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty well. Well, the other suggestions that Chuck came up with were the oh, Rockets. 
don't even know who they are. I remember them. Don't even, the yeah. Melvins. Yeah, I don't yeah. know them, but the I've babies. Heard of them. The babies. Well, the babies did yeah. pretty. The babies yeah. were, didn't do too bad. They never. They. I think they ended up. They well, ended they up went breaking. to other bands. Oh, see, yeah, Jonathan they went to King, other bands. See, Jonathan came with, with Journey. Yeah. Then you had uh, Watch Medito went on his own. Um, John singer, Wade. Uh, John Wade. John you know, he did. A, he had a hell of a solo career. He also did uh, Bad English. Bad English. Right. With yeah. John Kane and Neil Sean. And I do like yeah. the babies. I, I do. I got a couple of their albums. I saw them open for somebody. I can't remember who it was, but I did see them open. I think that they didn't stay around long enough. I mean, they didn't try long enough. You know what I'm saying? They they split up and went different ways. It wasn't the fact of that they didn't get the opportunity. They didn't give themselves an opportunity, put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> what was the first band you mentioned, Alan? The Rockets. The Rockets. Autograph is another band that I thought was really good. That mm. never really went anywhere. But the, okay. that, the, the video, video the turn up the radio. I, yeah. I, I think they lost a lot of credibility when the guy was walking around with a transistor radio in his hand. You yeah, it could get, have been, but you can't yeah, get that very loud. No, but it, that was a that was. See, Crocus, so I would put them in that I same category. Yeah, Crocus, Crocus is a good I seen, one. I seen them open for a shit guy with people, but they never made it big. Yeah. And they had a ton of they had a ton of hits. They had a ton of albums. Um, like you said, maybe just not everybody can be. Everybody can't be number one, man. <laughs> well, I have one final. Right. Anvil. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I, I love the fact I I I, I got uh, that movie. I've I actually Spinal that. Tap. <laughs> I, yeah, it is. It's Spinal Tap. I I, I uh, can't make myself watch that movie. I really don't know anything about Anvil, but actually, I have it on DVD. I'll loan it to you. I don't want to see it. No, it's I, worth watching. It's worth watching. <laughs> And I actually bought the bought one of their the that CD that they were trying to hawk on that deal because you kind of feel bad for them. But um, I won't mention any names, but a Bill. previous no a previous guest that we had on our show, I had the discussion with him and a few other of his friends about uh, Anvil one night, and being because they're from Canada, I figured that they would be <laughs> really into Anvil and. Anvil's burnt a shit gob of bridges in Canada, and they're not very well liked by their own people. You know, I kind of felt bad for them, and it's like going, no, no, no. They, their position where they are at, and the stuff that happened to them happened for a reason. <laughs> so, speaking of Canada, not a lot of love for those people at all. Speaking of Canada, how about Triumph? How did they ever really do any that headline stuff? One, I forgot about. I forgot to bring that up. They so did I until you said Canada. I saw. I saw the headline show for them. Yeah, and with Inve opening. Oh my God, mm -hmm. that was. Yeah. What about EZO or XYZ? Mm, no. No. But, just, uh, just throwing out band names that I recall yeah, Triumph, from, uh, from back Triumph, in the day. Yeah. I thought yeah, Triumph, Triumph was pretty good. They had you, you know, like I say, their 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 big time was you know early eighties, mm -hmm. and um, they to I me were kind of like a different kind of rush kind of sound. They yeah, were synthesizers, kind of mellow or rush kind of. Yeah, I liked I liked them though. I mean, yeah, I still listen to them some. Yeah, I don't remember much about that concert though. <laughs> had, a, had laser first time I ever seen laser. That was kind of cool. Had that had the horses and stuff yep. going. On. It was kind of cool. I, I just remember Ian Bay. At least I can tell, tell you about that. Shit -less. At least that I can time. tell you about that show. Oh yeah. Well, actually, she can tell you about it after the show because I parked in front of her house because she lived a block from the state. <laughs> Twelve thirty at night, and I'm screaming her name because <laughs> didn't go well. <laughs> How funny. <laughs> it didn't work like it on the movies. It didn't work that good. <laughs> no, I didn't have a radio. It wasn't yeah. like say anything. It was like you're a freaking moron. <laughs> yeah, it's too funny. That is funny. Well, yeah. I, I guess that probably about wraps it up, huh? Yeah, I think so. So, um, well, be before you wrap it up, I want to give a shout out to Chuck Gee at kickaxe.com for giving me some suggestions for tonight's show. Cool. And I'll hand it over to Bill to sign us out. All right. So there you have it. There's, I don't know. Let's see. We started out with two or three or 14. <laughs> bands, <laughs> bands that, throwing shit out there. You that, know? that shouldn't, that we're not sure exactly what happened. And some that we thought, how did they end up getting that big? You know, whatever. Um, but, you know, that's a cool thing about this. We just start talking and just hang on. When you get on the, when you, when you, when you hit the play button, 
You never know where the ride's going to lead. Exactly. <laughs> the edges so, of rock roller coaster podcast. That's exactly yeah. right. Mm-hmm. So thanks for listening to episode 22, and we will be getting back. 23. 23. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to episode 22. We appreciate you listening to episode 23, and 24 is on the way. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. He saved himself. I was going to save it. You interrupted me. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great week, and uh, give us some feedback. Hey, let us know who your bands are that you think should have made yeah. it that did, really didn't get big. We'd, it'd be cool to hear from you. All right, we're out of here. See ya. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Ages of Rock podcast. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and most importantly, tell all your friends. Remember, you're never too old to rock. Until the next episode, peace out, folks.